Jojo! Jojo! Don't make any sudden moves. Fire! Quick! Fire! Today, we are journeying back to the Pleistocene. Not the Cretaceous, even though Spino really wants me to. Today is not that day. We are concluding the Halloween video lineup with a revisit to the topic we kicked the season off with. The scariest extinct predators that you could have ever been hunted by during the Pleistocene. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, because it not only really helps me grow, but also lets me know what you all want to see more of, and it lets me make the kind of content you are interested in. Alright, let's not wait around and get started with our spooky season finale right away. And get you all up close and personal, nose to jaws, with these six terrifying predators that thankfully aren't around to hunt us today, but would have been terrifying to have been hunted by in life. Just imagining being prey to some of these will send a chill down your spine this Halloween day. And I promised that movie clip was not random because of our very first predator of the video. One of the obscure Pleistocene predators that has escaped mainstream recognition, but one that grabbed my attention and one that I do think would have been scary to be hunted by. Big cats in general can be terrifying to be chased by. Just look up that video of that hiker being chased by a mama cougar if you don't believe me. So, what was this ancient big cat? Panthera onca augusta was a subspecies of jaguar found in North America during the Pleistocene, which lasted from 1.8 million years ago to 11,000 years ago as we established in part 1. While extinct, this animal does likely still live on in Native American stories, passed down from those who encountered it all those long years ago. That is a fascinating thing to think about, and it puts into perspective that even though the Pleistocene was not so long ago, it was still a very ancient prehistoric world, the echoes of which live on in some folklore. The animal was from the southern United States, and aside from those Native American tales about it, the animal became known to all in 1872 when the first fossils were described. The remains were found in the Plate River in Nebraska and were sent to the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. More fossils were discovered in 1938 when some fragmentary skeletons of this jaguar were found in a cave in Maryland intermingled with the remains of a puma. More discoveries were found in 1939 and 1944, again both in caves, the 1939 fossils being found in Craighead Caverns, and in 1944, those fossils were found in Salt River Cave. The 1944 remains are fascinating, as they consist of well-preserved skulls of this animal, and two more partial skulls. Like with some other predators we covered in Part 1, Remains of this animal are scattered far and wide, as far south as Mexico, and remains have also been found in the Labria tar pits of California. But the most common place the remains of this jaguar are found is Florida. So, jaguars versus gators. I'll take your bets now. You know what, Spino? So would I. Seeing how big cats and other jaguars hunt today lets you paint a vivid and frightening image of what this animal might have been like if it was your predator on a dark night. Even smaller big cats can be scary. Again, look at that video of a cougar chasing the hiker. It's terrifying. I'm thankful that this animal's days of being a sneak in the night that slowly creeps up on you are in the past. They are best left there. That is a horror story I'm thankful I will not experience. Unless someone pulls a Jurassic Park with this animal, though. 
With some of these animals, the horror story just writes itself. But since it lives on thousands of years after those encounter it have all died, again, in stories, this animal must have truly left an impression behind, beyond what its fossilized bones can tell us. And perhaps some of its scary secrets will be unlocked in a mixture of folklore and future fossil finds. Yet, I'm sure the fossils and folklore are only a shadow of what this animal was like in life. We can only picture the fear that it must have brought to humans long ago. Let's keep talking, big cats, because I don't think people really think about them too much outside of Smilodon when it comes to talking about prehistoric animals. And from the look of this one's teeth, it likely would have taken a bite out of you if you'd let it. Coming to us now from the early or middle Pleistocene, Panthera fossilis is an extinct prehistoric big cat of the Panthera genus. Who could have guessed? But also sometimes called a cave or steppe lion. But those are actually a related species, but this one might be ancestral to them. Fossils dating back 680,000 years were first uncovered in Germany, and others were found in the United Kingdom too, meaning that this animal likely did encounter and compete with early human species. And look at this reconstruction of it alive. I bet it hunted them sometimes. Once again, prehistory is a world of untapped potential horror movies, and don't even have to speculate that much. Enough prehistoric animals exist that accurate reconstructions would be scary. Uh, right, Spino. This scary big cat was larger than most modern lions, so again, the horror movie plot writes itself and doesn't need to be exaggerated. It's also considered an early lion, at least it was historically. Modern genome sequences have proved that this animal is distinct enough from modern lions to be a fully separate species. Compared to modern lions, the skull of this animal is wider, and so was its nasal cavity and orbitus. Its jaw was reduced with lower premolars and small incisors, but from the art we saw before, its teeth were still wicked nonetheless. As I said, this cat existed with early humans and other prehistoric fauna, we know Homo heidelbergensis lived in the same area of Germany that this cat lived, and at the same time, too. So again, competitions for food and the other falling as food to the other likely happened and went both ways from time to time. Movie plot is right there, though. Just saying. I will write that horror movie. My inbox is open. Animals, aside from humans that coexisted with this cat, included familiar faces, such as hippopotamus. That's also a terrifying animal that we still have today. It also lived with the moose. Again, another scary one, especially a mama moose, but also some more prehistoric faces were around as well. Such as Rapid Fire Time, the Straight Tusked Elephant, the Southern Mammoth, the Steppe Bison, Saber Tooth Cats, and prehistoric bears, wolves, and hyenas. Also, all of those animals might have interacted... Let me rephrase that. How all of those animals might have interacted, they definitely did, is fascinating to think about. Again, I will write that movie. You don't know, we don't know, actually, a whole lot about this animal overall. But what we do paints a picture, and it's a scary picture. Thinking about more primitive humans, trying to fight off one of these huge cats with their spears and stone axes is scary. We know Homo heidelbergensis lived in the same area of Germany that this cat lived, and at the same time, too. So again, competitions for food and the other falling as food to the other likely happened and went both ways from time to time. Movie plot is right there, though. Just saying. I will write that horror movie. My inbox is open. Animals, aside from humans that coexisted with this cat, included familiar faces, such as hippopotamus. That's also a terrifying animal that we still have today. It also lived with the moose. Again, another scary one, especially a mama moose, but 
Also, some more prehistoric faces were around as well. Such as Rapid Fire Time, the Straight Tusked Elephant, the Southern Mammoth, the Steppe Bison, Saber Tooth Cats, and Prehistoric Bears, Wolves, and Hyenas. Also, all of those animals might have interacted... Let me rephrase that. How all of those animals might have interacted, they definitely did, is fascinating to think about. Again, I will write that movie. You don't know. We don't know, actually, a whole lot about this animal overall. But what we do paints a picture, and it's a scary picture. Thinking about more primitive humans trying to fight off one of these huge cats with their spears and stone axes is scary. Prehistory, in some ways, was a real-life horror movie, and the mental image of one of these huge cats stalking unaware early humans in the dark, maybe with its fangs and eyes gleaming in the moonlight, is scary. And that's why I consider it one of the scariest terrestrial Pleistocene predators. All right, one more big prehistoric cat before we move on to some less feline faces for the second half of the video. And with those teeth, I think we have a real winner here for the Scary Awards. Spino, please, buddy. Your teeth are terrifying, but we don't need to see them. We want to see this cat's teeth. So, this is the very cave lion, also known as the step lion species I mentioned in the last section, that the previous scary cat is sometimes called. But this one, we know a bit more about than the last one, so that's a bonus. More horror to keep you up and from sleeping tonight. It appeared less than 600,000 years ago and lasted until very recently, only 13,000 years ago. The ancestors to this species branched off from other lions almost 2 million years ago. And these are known to have been genetically isolated from modern lions that were appearing in Africa around this time. These ones ranged across Europe and into North America. They were also considered by one author in the 19th century to be more akin to the tiger than it was to the lion. Touching on the history of its study there, let's cover how this animal's fossil bones were first unearthed. Like the last one, the fossils of this one were found in Germany, but back in 1810 by George... August Goldfuss, what a name, who assigned this animal its scientific name. Y'all like it when I butcher these, so here's my first attempt to say it. The text will be on screen as I say it. Panthera spelathia, planther splatter, I don't care. I'm sure that pronunciation was the scariest thing you've heard in this whole video. <laughs> Study of the metamor- metamor- I can't remember. R slash I had a stroke, everybody. Study of the morphological data of this animal's cranial and dental anatomy was used to justify the status of it being its own species. So with all that covered, and I honestly would like to do a video on this animal's evolution and its close relatives, its relation to big cats in general in the future, because it doesn't really fit the tone of this one, it's interesting. But for now... Let's just focus on this animal and see what makes this animal a scary one. This animal hunted in open environments, such as the steppe tundra and the boreal forest. And in these environments, it was the apex predator. So, once again, for early humans, the horror story just writes itself. And I wonder if those early humans had their own legends about this animal that maybe we don't know in our species at all and stories that have been long utterly lost to history. Fossils also raise a debate about this animal similar to the Utah raptor from about a month ago. Was it a solo act or a social animal? Truthfully, we do not really know, but evidence suggests that it was a solo act, meaning that it was a deadly enough hunter to not need help. Once again, oh. Okay, Spino, I won't. 
It was still a terrifying predator of the Pleistocene, though, that I'm happy is not around to be a danger to us today. Frozen cubs of this animal found in the same area and thought to originally be siblings, but dated to have actually lived 15,000 years apart from one another, give us a good idea of the appearance of this animal and what it might have been capable of when fully grown. Possible animals that were unfortunate enough to be hunted by this animal and feel the bite of its teeth and the stab of its claws were more rapid fire time, giant deer, red deer, wild horse, musshawks, aroches, horrible mispronunciations that I'm bringing upon myself for your entertainment, European bison, step bison, young woolly rhino, and young woolly mammoth. The large European Ice Age leopard, another scary one that could appear in a future video on this topic, and cave hyenas, cave bears, large wolves, and dire wolves all likely served as competitors to this animal. Each one a terrifying predator in its own right, and all worthy to be in a video about the scariest animals that hunted in this time. Each one a terrifying predator in its own right, and all worthy to be in a video on the scariest animals that you could be hunted by in this time. But I think this could very well be one of the most frightening of all. And the idea of one of these slowly stalking you on a dark night without moonlight is very chilling. Just picture yourself in that scenario. Really imagine it. The wind in the grass, the dark, starless sky, the night air, the crickets chirping, and the soft growl of something very silent creeping close, but you don't see it anywhere, save for maybe for a quick gleam of its large face, its fangs exposed and its eyes gleaming, a quick glimpse but one enough to show you just how big the thing stalking you is. You can't tell me you wouldn't be afraid of this terrifying Pleistocene predator. A predatory canine that's as big as a wolf? It's already scary. We're finally getting away from big cats, though, and checking out some... not much less scary faces, all predators with a mouthful of sharp teeth that want to eat you. Good times for this Halloween. Trick or treat, am I right? So what was this one all about? The European Dole is a paleo subspecies of... get this, you'll never believe it... the Dole which is a canid native to Southeast, Southeast, and Central Asia, also known as the Asian wild dog. This one, however, stretched its hunting grounds and bared its teeth around most of Western and Central Europe during the Middle and Late Pleistocene. Compared to its modern counterpart, you almost can't tell the two apart at all. This lost hunter was identified in 1954 and became known as the first member of its genus to be identified in Europe, during the Pleistocene, but was followed by more which have been described back in the 19th century by, it just came to light later. This doe was likely a danger to humans several thousand years ago. Can you imagine the fear of a pack of these hunting you in the night, circling in as you try to save what you can from your group's kill, their eyes gleaming in the moonlight? It's spooky stuff to picture, and you can't say it, you wouldn't have been afraid had you lived in those long ago days. And since wolves likely would do this later on, it's very likely that these animals did the same thing. Sometime between 650 and 450,000 years ago, this animal could have been found in the forests, highlands, mountains, coexisting with early small wolves. However, around 430,000 years ago, this animal's range began to fall, and competition with other animals, probably early humans, would have sent this animal into extinction sometime around 7,000 years ago, leaving the fear that it might have brought to early people, a fear lost in the past, but one that might still be imprinted into us today, somewhere deep down in those ancient instincts and fears that are all still inside each one of us. Think about that, and what prehistoric fears might still be inside of us this Halloween. We are spending the night on the boat. It's too wet for a fire, and too risky ashore without one. The animals we've seen up till now have been familiar, even if they're not quite the same as the ones we know in the 20th century. But soon, 
we should be meeting wildlife completely strange. Animals that died out long before the arrival of man. Home seems so far away. Secretly, I've begun to wonder. Crocodilicus anthropopagus. Man, that's a name. Wait till you hear what it means. So not a mammal this time, but instead something that definitely would be the most likely out of all of these, in my opinion, to hunt and eat you. A large extinct crocodile that grew up to 25 feet long that might have seen you as a tasty Halloween treat had you wandered down to the wrong stream some 1.84 million years ago. I mean, looking at this thing, the set of jaws in that picture on screen alone are terrifying enough about the size of the animal wielding them just adding to it. Just picturing seeing these jaws erupting out of the water is terrifying. And if you think I'm wrong, look up the saltwater crocodile. But what about this crocodile? The large crocodile species was a terror in Tanzania, and unlike some of the others in this video, it was actually not named until 2010. Now, the scientific name of this animal is interesting. Anthro means human, and papagus means eater. This animal is literally named human eater because there is direct evidence of hominids being included in this animal's diet. Terrifying. This one might have just ran away with the gold medal for horror in this video. The teeth of this crocodile were conical and weren't serrated. Between certain ones, there were notable gaps. It had horns over its ears. The femur was slightly S-shaped. The holotype specimen of this animal, known as NNHM1001, consisted of a skull and a few parts of the main skeleton. The rock formations these were found in dated to 1.845 and 1.839 million years ago. This crocodile lacks the shallow bony pair of crests running from the eyes to the nose that you see in other Indo-Pacific crocodiles found in the region, but that doesn't mean that this wasn't a crocodile to be feared just because it was a bit of an oddball in the neighborhood. This thing would eat you if it could. If it could jump out of the past and into today, trick or treat, it would eat you. A crocodile 25 feet long can and will and do eat people. And with a name like Human Eater, I don't think I'd want to put the theory to the test. Yeah, probably. And that would not do the terror that a crocodile this big could do justice at all. Picture the scene with me. You're in the jungle coming down to the water for food or a drink. Then, there's a splash. And what moments before was a calm river, the water erupts in a set of giant open jaws adorned with sharp teeth with gaps here and there is coming right at you. And that gaping maw is the last thing you ever see. And the last thing you feel is the bite. And then you're pulled into the water and it all goes dark. Terrifying.
before a raucous. Carnivorous ancestor of the ostrich, and he almost got me. This was a final resurgence of the dinosaurs that echoed the days of the Mesozoic. Sure, technically we still have dinosaurs today, but this was one last gasp of that ancient world that reappeared shortly before the modern day. And boy, did they live up to the name Terror Birds. The dinosaurs went out with a, a literal bang during the Cretaceous, and in the Pleistocene they popped up in a way that echoed their old glory with a bang too. So let's end this video with this final era of the dinosaurs as they briefly rose to their old glory and cover them in what will probably be the most extensive section of the entire video, just because I think terror birds are cool. But the scariest time of the year is also the perfect time to give the spotlight to these scariest of Pleistocene birds. Terror birds evolved before but lasted into the Pleistocene, and for this section, I'm going to talk about them as a collective bunch. Spino, before you ask, this is the closest to dinosaurs we're getting to in this one. But they are not Mesozoic ones. I might do videos on the specific species in the future, but for now, we're just talking about all of them. Four Sorachids were, in my opinion, some of the scariest predators of the entire Pleistocene. Fast, carnivorous, you couldn't outrun one. If it wanted to eat you, you were going to get eaten. These flightless birds appeared in South America and were a terror. Apex predators throughout their entire reign. I say again, picture yourself in the grasslands of South America several million years ago. And you see one of these things sprinting right at you. You have nowhere to run. I can only watch this resurrected dinosaur coming towards you, beak wide open. It's chilling. And you know you'd be afraid. These animals ranged in height, but got up to 10 feet tall, and they didn't just terrorize South America. One of the largest species moved north during the Great American Interchange, and fossils have been found in Texas and Florida, the most recent dating to about 1.8 million years ago. Though, some theories have offered up the idea that they lasted until humans arrived, and the idea of seeing these birds chasing down, hunting, or fighting early arrivals to North America using those huge claws on their feet to attack while people try to fight them back with spears? Scary, but again, I'd watch that movie. Let's move on. Look at this image on screen. You get a real good idea of the scale of these. They're dinosaurs. That's literally what they are. They're birds. They're dinosaurs. And while looking at fossil bones as... Only a fleeting echo of their former glory, you have to use your imagination to really fill in the gaps, you can still get an idea of what these things would have been like to behold in life. And you can't tell me that seeing one of these alive wouldn't be as awe-inspiring as it would be terrifying. Look how it towers over those people. Yes, Spino. Thank you for the insightful commentary, buddy. As I said, these were very fast runners, and they had a large, sharp beak, a large, flattened skull with a powerful neck, and as I kind of touched on, large and sharp talons on their feet. If there is any comfort about this, maybe they wouldn't eat you in a horrific reenactment of the long grass scene from The Lost World, because it is actually theorized that terror birds mostly fed on smaller animals due to these being able to be dispatched without much of a struggle. However, it is also just as possible that these did take on bigger prey, even with a somewhat weaker bite force. That doesn't mean anything. Animals with weaker bite forces can eat large prey. Examples can be found throughout nature. And there is some circumstantial evidence that these did hunt larger prey. So that long, long grass remake, it might just happen. Watch for these next time you go into the long grass. Imagine seeing the head of one of these birds poke up out of the grass while you're in the middle of it. That's a terrifying mental image to imagine. Somebody draw that. Do it. I want to see it. You did not just call Chica the FNAF bird, Spino. 
back back to the topic. You get on me for getting off topic, and now you're doing it. One bit of evidence that hints that terror birds didn't hunt small prey at all was, well, think about it when you see a rabbit run. What do they do? They zig and they zag. A recent find showed that some terror birds can run very fast in a straight line, but struggle during tight turns at those speeds, and it seems that they were not well adapted to hunt small prey at all unless they were good at catching them in the first ambush alone. So while we don't know for sure what exactly terror birds ate, though the odds are good it might have eaten you had you stood right in front of one, I'm not going to go test that theory in the field. We do know that all terror birds were carnivores. The sharp beak suggests they used it for ripping the flesh from the body of other animals, an action you saw in the movie clip a few minutes ago, actually. Some birds around today that are carnivores have that beak shape. Turkey vultures, anyone? With that hook on their beak, terror birds would drive down on their prey with a sharp downward force. Additionally, specimens that were supposedly found but never officially described and then never relocated, frustratingly, showed evidence that terror birds swallowed their prey whole, which I could believe since I've seen a seagull swallow a whole rabbit before. And then afterward, they would regurgitate the undigested parts in a, in a round pellet, like owls do. So again, not testing that theory in the field. I don't want to know what their method was. I'd like to sleep tonight. Why terror birds went extinct is not fully known. Or when. Generally, some dates put it going extinct around 1 million years before humans arrived in the Americas. There is some very interesting evidence, though, that suggests smaller ones, not the 10-foot tall ones that, you know, might snatch and gulp you, survived until as recently as 18,000 years ago. If proved true, that means this, they lasted up until very recently and well into the late Pleistocene. There are multiple specimens that might hint that this last hurrah of the dinosaurs lasted until much closer to the modern world than we first thought. And that is a very intriguing notion. I am very curious to see where further study on that particular matter ends up. So, those were six more of the most terrifying animals that you could have been hunted by during the Pleistocene. And with that, this is also the end of the Halloween lineup. I really hope you all enjoyed it, and we saw a lot of new subscribers during this month, so all of you, thank you so much. It means more than I can say, truly. So much growth in this one month has been just crazy, and I'm really happy you enjoyed my content. Tell me which of these videos from this month of spooky topics was your favorite, and tell me which of the predators we covered in this video you think would be the scariest to be hunted by. Spino, stop it! So next week, we will be talking about not the Spinosaurus, no you won't Spino, but instead we will revisit a topic from months ago that I really enjoyed and have wanted to do another one of, and for those of you who like the ships and maritime stories, you're in for a treat because we are going to be talking about ships which vanished on the Great Lakes. That's right, we are finally going to do a volume two of that video. We covered so many that vanished in the ocean, but the Great Lakes are untapped and just have as many stories to tell. So meet me at Indiana Dunes, not really, full disclaimer, don't, I'm not going to be there, and we'll set sail from there out into those lakes and maybe find some clues to bring the stories to light. Join me next week for Ships That Vanished on the Great Lakes, Volume 2. Like in Volume 1, we'll cover a story from each lake. Check out Volume 1 in the meantime if you haven't seen it. Tell me topics you want to see covered in future videos, and have a good week, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow, probably, with my... FNAF movie review, unless something came up and I didn't get to see it, in which case I'll just be sad. Also, if you enjoy paleontology, stay tuned because another paleo video is coming out very soon. I have multiple topics in mind, including a Cambrian creepy crawly, and of course, more dinosaurs. No, Spino, but I will be doing more obscure historical mysteries, gonna bring all the popular topics back in November. 
Thank you for watching. Have a happy Halloween. Be sure you have your silver shamrock masks on at 9 for the big giveaway. And watch out for the boogeyman. Have a good one, everyone.